In May of last year, in bustling London, a disconcerting new ad campaign began for a company called Persona Synthetic. Newspapers, social media, uh, physical billboards on Regent Street, an eBay listing, a website, all unveiled the same new product. An advanced robotic servant with functions like childcare, cooking, cleaning, and personal training. Coming soon to a store near you. Don't get your hopes up. Eventually, this is all revealed as a giant hoax. Just a clever way to garner attention for Channel 4's latest sci-fi drama, Human. But at first, people freaked out. And with good reason. See, when it comes to robotics and animation, people assume that designs get more and more realistic with time. Because that sounds like progress. And it would be. We're not for one tiny effect called the Uncanny Valley. So, ja this is Japanese roboticist Masahiro Mori. He first discovered this phenomenon back in 1970, which he called Bukini no Kani Gensho. It received virtually no response until 2005, but it remains relatively unknown even today. So let me try to explain. I want you guys to hold up your hands and rate on your fingers the next few images from one to five. Five being you'd empathize with them, they look familiar in your lives. One being you'd turn and run away screaming. And three being neutral. Ready? Go. All right, let's see what we have. So it's pretty neutral, just like normal robots working in a glass plant. Next image. So similar thing, but a little bit more human. Kind of scary. I see a lot of the numbers. Okay. I see a lot of variety on this one. Some people think they're cute, and some people think they're kind of scary. How about this one? Sorry. How about that? Okay. <laughs> this one's a Japanese robot. Um, cover play AQ2. One last image for you. A lot of people think that one's a human, but it's actually a robot. Gemini DK. Alright, so now see if your rating lines up with Mori's conjecture. Essentially, as the x axis is human -like likeness, and as the graph approaches indistinguishable from a living human, people's affinity toward them, or shinwakan, as Mori calls it, increases. However, just before the graph becomes nearly indistinguishable from like humans, like us, it takes a steep plunge as human response dies from familiar empathy to utter revulsion, the uncanny valley. And I have a clip to show you just um, an example. I guess you guys can kind of see my point. So in the beginning, it kind of looked like a normal human, we were okay with it, but when that imperfection came, our brains rejected it as other. You see the uncanny valley. At the deepest part is the human corpse, as close as you can get to lifelike without the actual life part. Kind of morbid. And As you can see along this dotted line here, the uncanny valley effect is heightened when the subject is moving, 
which explains at least part of the human fascination with zombies in popular culture. They say seeing is believing, and the uncanny valley is that gap between seeing and believing. Now back in 1970, when Maury's essay first appeared in Energy Magazine, there were too many humanoid robots just walking around. His intuition was actually based on electronic prosthetic hands in development, which produced the same effect. The University of Manchester found that, as you can see here, people consistently rate prosthetics made to look like skin as more eerie than their metallic counterparts because of the uncanny valley. However, even though he discovered this phenomenon back in 1970, it may date much farther back. Some have proposed it's an evolutionary response. In one experiment that may support this theory, researchers at Princeton University observed an effect of the uncanny valley, this time in macaque monkeys. The uncanny valley has many other potential causes. It may be a simple indication of humanity's highly evolved ability to process spatial patterns. Maybe it's connected to fears of being replaced by robots. Perhaps androids remind us of our own mortality or the inevitability of death. To be clear, whatever the cause, the Uncanny Valley is still more psychological theory than actual scientific fact. However, science experiments affirm it exists. An international team based at UC San Diego connected the Uncanny Valley to neuroscience using functional MRIs. Subjects viewed three sets of videos. As you can see, a robot, a humanoid robot, and an actual human. Compared to the other two, the humanoid robot lit up areas of the brain that connect the visual cortex to the part of the brain that contains empathy neurons. This shows our reaction to incongruence, that difference between what we see and what we expect. Okay, so now what? What does the uncanny valley mean for robotics, computer graphics, and video games in our lives? Well, movies like The Polar Express or Final Fantasy were sometimes rejected by viewers as being creepy or off-putting because of the uncanny valley. Maury's advice? is actually to aim for that first peak right here, rather than pushing the limits and risk plummeting into the uncanny valley. But it never has been in human nature to stop at just good enough. And the latest advances may have been considered unfathomable in Maury's time. Just five months ago, a Chinese robot called Xia, Xia was released, called the most realistic robot to date. And technology is always improving, but now humanity has begun closing the uncanny valley gap from the other direction. One Korean beauty trend called Ulzong actually celebrates this look, making the eyes appear bigger with cosmetics or surgery, mimicking large anime eyes. So who knows? Perhaps within a decade or so, humanoid robots will actually walk among us as naturally as members of our own race. But until then, we'll have to make do with our own imaginations or science fiction TV shows like Inhumans. Oh, and try to remember, always beware the uncanny valley. Thank you. Um, so I do have a few questions for you. So first, when do you think humanity will surpass the uncanny valley? Honestly, I think that point is already here. There's something called the Turing test. I don't know if you've seen the movie um, about Alan Turing. Yeah, well, it's kind of named after him. And it's like, when can robots and artificial intelligence become indistinguishable from humans? And there are robots that we have that at certain movements through certain angles, people can't distinguish them from like living humans. So I think we're like well on our way to surpassing it. So, humanoid robots, the more humanoid they get, human-like. Isn't that a bit creepy? Oh, I don't know. You might even say, I'm <laughs> Kenny. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> um, so, out of all like the bold, creative ideas you could have chosen, what made you choose a candy 
knowledge? Like, what sparked the idea first? Well, okay, honestly, I had this idea, well, I learned about this idea in ninth grade, and I've always been interested in like robotics and animation, and just kind of combined both of those two areas, so I was really interested to learn more. And um, I think like when we watch Disney movies and everything, everyone knows that to, if a character's really cute, people make the eyes really big, you know, because it kind of appeals to us. But if you've seen The Incredibles, not only are the eyes bigger, but like some of their heads are bigger, their bodies are out of proportion, and there's a reason for that. Because if, they're, if they try to be too realistic to humans, um, then sometimes, you know, the uncanny valley effect comes into play and we might feel a little bit creeped out. So that's why they try to make characters that have like fun body types and everything and we like them more. And so I always thought it was really interesting. Thank you so much.